Well, welcome back to Philly Sports Spotlight. You know, I'm Phil Andrews, and it's really time for me to come clean. I have to confess something to you. I have never, ever been a big fan of running, even back when I played competitive sports, but I always knew it was one of those necessary evils. Well, not only uh, has Delaware native Hugh Campbell taken up the sport, but he now has the bug, as Philly Sports Spotlight contributor Mike McCoy explains. After declaring retirement, a lot of people may choose the sport of chess. Others may choose the sport of golf. But for one Hugh Campbell, he's chosen the sport of competitive running. And at the age of 88, there doesn't seem to be anything that is slowing him down. I had no idea of running competit competitively two years ago. I just wanted to get out and run around the neighborhood. And at the age of 86, he did just that. But his hobby has quickly turned into a career for the ages, as he has recorded the 3,000 meter record for his age group after just two years of training. I've, I've discovered by now that, that for my age, I do pretty well on, on short, short races. However, the Wilmington, Delaware native didn't reach his successes without a few mountains to climb. Well, he fell and, and right on his face on about the second time he ran. And uh, very bloody and very messy, and he refused to go to the hospital because he thought it was superficial. I had experienced some uh, dizziness in, in, as, as I was getting used to running. This time, toward the end of the race, I wanted to do well, and I just forgot to be careful enough. So he finished the race, trained harder, joined the Pine Creek Running Club, and recorded a 3K time of 26.33 in Haddonfield this past month, with his average mile clocking in at 8 minutes and 32 seconds. But Campbell credits another hobby that helped keep his legs going. Walking and carrying my clubs on my back uh, for the last 25 years, day in and day out, has, has, has been good for my legs. And not, not necessarily bad for them, which might have happened if I'd been running all those years. Rest, golf, relaxation are the formulas for Campbell, but he believes he hasn't accomplished anything yet. Uh, the only thing that I've done is not try to run until I was 86 years old. I have a feeling that I'm still improving a little bit. And that's, that's a good sign when you're, when you're 88 and you think that you're gonna slow down pretty quick. And if he is improving, who knows what could happen next. Coming up for Campbell, he will compete in a national 8K competition in Williamsburg, where he will defend his 3,000 meter record. Reporting for Philly Sports Spotlight, I'm Mike McCoy. That's a great story. Let me just reiterate, he's 88 years old. No, not Mike, Hugh. It's just a wonderful story, and you know what? He's probably extended his life a little bit there, too, by getting out there and exercising at 88. Gotta love that story. Okay, time to take our final break. When we return, we're gonna tell you uh, about how the Eagles are doing great things off the field and bringing uh, children's futures into focus. As we return to Philly Sports Spotlight, a quick shout out to all you Chris Mann fans. He's going to be at the Keswick Theater in Glenside, PA on Saturday, May 4th. For more information, call the Keswick at 215-572-7650 or visit keswicktheater.com for more information. That's for all you Chris Mann fans. All right, time now to reveal the answer to this week's trivia question, which was how many times have the Eagles actually held the number one overall pick in the NFL draft? The answer, three times. As a matter of fact, Jay Burwanger back in 1936 was the first ever player drafted by the National Football League. He never played for the Eagles because the Eagles didn't think they could pay his $1,000 a game request. So they traded that pick on to the Chicago Bears. He never ended up playing football. Sam Francis never ended up playing football either. And in 1949, they drafted some guy named Chuck Bednarik. I think Eagle fans know who he is. Well, as the Eagles continue to piece together what they hope is eventually a title team, the franchise has long been a champion off the field, especially with their various charities, like, for instance, the Eagles Imobile. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all. Our 
Our school is very thrilled today. The Eagle Automobile has come into our schoolyard and is providing service for our boys and girls. We have numbers of children that are not able to get glasses on their own for lots of reasons. We have a number of children that our nurses worked hard to arrange permission with the parents to come and participate in this, and they're going to be seen and have their eyes examined. And if they need glasses, they're going to receive glasses, which is wonderful. It's a blessing for our kids to be able to uh, participate in this program. And of course, it's the Eagles, and so they're you know, enamored of anything to do with the Eagles. And the fact that it's at no cost to the families is um, clearly an amazing thing. My friend, this is just a flashlight that I use to look into your eyes. All you need to do, your job is super easy. All you have to do is look right at my nose. Think you can do that? Just look right there at my nose. Beautiful job. What kind do you like? Do you have the Eagle glasses? We've had a lot of children who have failed their vision screening, so we have the Eagle's Eye Mobile come, who I refer to the children that need glasses, and then they will recheck them and give them the glasses. So we've provided a lot of children with glasses who have needed glasses for the past several years and weren't able to get them. I think with the Eagle's Eye Mobile, they identify with success. When they see the Eagle's Eye Mobile, they think success. And having that program is good because it's necessary to have glasses. They can succeed with glasses. Can't have glasses, can't see, no success. When the children receive the eyeglasses, they're thrilled and the parents are thrilled. And we believe that it's a very worthwhile service that the Eagles Youth Partnership has been providing for the school children. It's a lot of people in here and they look pretty small. And the inside, on the outside, it look big. I guess I want this one. I knew you would. The staff on the iMobile are phenomenal. I couldn't have asked for a better group of people who like to work with children. To see a pediatric doctor who knows how to get the children to smile, to answer, know when they're malingering, phenomenal. Because it's the Philadelphia Eagles and the kids are very familiar with it, they're more responsive as far as wearing the glasses when they need to wear the glasses. Wearing glasses is very much cooler than it was a few weeks ago before they came. We've noticed since we've had the Eagles Eye Mobile come to us, there's been an increase in our reading skills and also in our math skills for the children. The message is they really care about the community. They really do. And they're reaching the neediest population of people. I mean, if you're going to do something for the population, they've really done a remarkable job. The Eagles understand that taking care of your body matters. They understand that health matters. I, I really think they did get the message that if you're given extra, then you have a responsibility. To That's right. They call it giving back to the community and just one of the many ways that the Eagles continue to do so, helping those young children find focus. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this offering of Philly Sports Spotlight. Don't forget, we'll see you back here every Wednesday night at 7 to midnight. On behalf of the entire Philly Sports Spotlight crew, my good friend Ken Dunnick, I'm Phil Andrews, and I'm out of here. Spotlight. But just be